saw some uh, law enforcement up on the bridge, but pretty much what you were seeing now on this bridge is pretty much what we have seen all day, and that's pretty much nothing. And so you heard Charlie's uh, talk about the, the judge's decision on the injunction. So we're just waiting to see some trucks on uh, one of America's busiest international corridors for trade between the U.S. and Canada. Also, we got some good news or some promising news from some of the two of the big three automakers. 115 Friday afternoon, we saw some signs of activity on the American side of the Ambassador Bridge. Agents from U.S. Customs and Border Patrol and Bridge Authority line up their vehicles in a blockade formation. Five minutes later, marked and unmarked cars head down to the American entry. Officers were also in place pacing around the area. But after 2 o'clock, no more flashing lights. All the agents and their vehicles were gone. That brief episode was the most action we've seen on the U.S. side of the Ambassador Bridge in days. A stark contrast to Thursday when a crucial corridor for trade between the U.S. and Canada looked more like a ghost town. Canada's Freedom Convoy protests over the country's COVID mandates forced truck drivers to drive 60 plus miles to the Blue Water Bridge in Port Huron. That's where drivers waited hours to deliver auto parts and other supplies into Canada. It's taken a financial toll on automakers, including the big three, which some had to shut down shifts at production plants. But they're managing. A statement from Stellantis said, quote, Stellantis continues to make production adjustments as necessary due to part shortages caused by the closure of the Detroit-Windsor Bridge. Although the situation remains incredibly fluid, our teams are working around the clock to keep parts flowing into plants to mitigate further disruptions. We also heard from Ford, which uh, all of its plants restarted on schedule this morning. However, there were uh, plants in Flint in Ontario, which uh, restart well, had to cut their first product production shift short because they had some supply shortages. Also, we did hear from the uh, Department of Homeland Security. They've been in contact and you heard the, the protesters talking in, in Charlie's uh, story. Uh, they've been they're in place because uh, they may be called in place for any uh, unruly activity. Reporting live here on Southwest Detroit, I'm Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News. Yeah, Brandon, that silence we're hearing on your end of this story is echoed at those plants that you're speaking of. Toyota uh, basically coming out today saying, look, we're not going to be able to resume our operations in Ontario as well. And that's they're, they're counting dollars that are being missed right here. Yeah, Rube, you're talking about millions of dollars at stake here. And you're not just talking about the millions of dollars in the bottom line. Actually, we're seeing some Detroit police over here patrolling the area here at Riverside Park. Uh, but uh, as, as I digress here, uh, you're talking about millions of dollars. You're talking about a bottom line for a lot of these automakers. But you're also talking about the workers who have uh, had to go home early, not get paid, and then they can't put food on the table as a result of it. So this injunction couldn't come soon enough. Brandon Hudson for us live on the Detroit side of the border. Thank you.